Good morning guys. So take a look. We came outside today and the cow was chewing on the plantern and the plantern knocked over. So I guess we have to go and work <laughs> I'm trying to figure out new ways on how to use the camera so I'm gonna go out for a walk a quick walk today now let's see if this works hmm. well let's uh, let's go out and take a look all right we'll see you guys where did the cow go I went for a walk. I don't know where. It's not there. It's not there. The cow knows where to go. See you guys in a minute. Hey guys. So here we are. Found the cow. The cow is just wandering aimlessly. I, I, I know, I've seen the cow around. The guy's running around to eat. But you have to be careful. They can just come and charge at you at any time. So you gotta be careful. So welcome to the show. I am Sri Lankan Sammy. I want to say thanks guys for coming out, hanging out with me today. I am retired with mom and dad. I'm Canadian citizen for you guys who are new to the channel and I want to thank you for joining me on this adventure all of my new subscribers uh, and the people who are watching from India lots of love to you guys thank you for joining I really truly appreciate everyone who is watching I'm trying to get the algorithm to push my videos towards people who are more interested in my lifestyle. So if you like what you are seeing, if you enjoy my content, if you think it has value, please do me a favor. I'm asking for a small favor. Click the like button, make a comment, whether it's a positive comment or constructive criticism, or even just an emoji, what that does is the algorithm will look at your profile and see what kind of person you are. And then it will push my video towards people who are like you. So you will be helping me just by clicking the like button, just by making a comment. You don't have to subscribe, although I would love it if you subscribed. Everything that you do interacting with me helps my channel grow. And that's what I'm looking to do. So I really hope you guys help me out with that. And thanks a lot for it. Uh, I'm gonna post the supporters here. Supporters are those who financially uh, uh, support the channel and what I'm doing by buying me a coconut or, or uh, on the live stream will be super chat. I do live streams on the weekends. I just finished one. It is Saturday afternoon. It's not even afternoon. Saturday morning, 10 o'clock. It's a beautiful day. People in the West are freezing. And I'm sitting here just living life. Sorry about the wind noise. I forgot to put the wind socks on the phone, on the camera. But hopefully that won't be too bad. So I'm going out for a quick walk today. And I thought I would talk to you guys about me getting fired quitting getting fired from carrot global those of you in korea who are interested in working at carrot global i'll give you a small piece of advice don't now the interesting thing is um korea has some very serious slander laws, defamation, but I don't live in Korea. I've talked about this before. 
they don't know that. Well, I never told them. They don't need to know. I work remote. But I could set myself up for a civil case, which I would lose, but I don't care. So to catch you guys up on Carrot, I am a freelance English teacher. So what I do is <clears throat> I teach English to people in South Korea. I have a permanent residence visa, which allows me to do whatever work I want anywhere at any time in South Korea, earn money, pay my taxes, etc. Now, uh, the reason I use a recruiter is because a lot of these companies, Samsung, LG, etc., pay corporate. So they will start an education program in their HR department and open it up to their employees and say, employees, you can join this program. It'll, you know, help improve your education and benefit the company. So it's an HR thing, but the company pays for it. The employee does not. The employee only has to have, you know, 80% attendance. That's their only requirement. Otherwise they have to pay for it. So because of that, I can't freelance to that. I can't, they can't hire me directly. They have to hire a company to pay the taxes and all of that stuff. They don't want to do it internally. They don't want to hire me. I don't, they don't want me to be an employee. They want to pay the consulting company. So basically they're the middleman. So Carrot will receive the application for the contract with other companies, but they will undercut. So they will, let's just pretend it's a hundred bucks an hour is the contract. They will offer me 30 or 40 and then they'll keep the rest as their, um, as their profit. So back in the beginning, before COVID, I I worked face to face, one on one. Online didn't exist in those days. And I made good money. I made really good money with Carrot because I was one of the top teachers. Carrot was a top company. They had contracts with all the big corporates. I actually made my way up the corporate chain and I was working for CEOs of Samsung, two of them. One of them I taught for four years, every day, four days, sometimes five days a week. I'd be teaching this guy English. Well, not teaching him, practicing English because they just want to practice their English to maintain the English level because they don't speak English at all with anyone. And no one's going to speak English with them because of their senior level. And because of my age and my education, I was highly sought. So I, I had great salaries with them. Then COVID happened and because I'm a freelancer, I don't get paid if I don't work. If they cancel in advance, I don't get paid. Right? So that sucks. So I started to lose money at the beginning of COVID. Then Carrot jumped on the back. They were smart. They were the only company to jump on the Zoom bandwagon. Someone in that company convinced the CEO or someone somewhere did something, took a risk, and they profited because they cut the pay because they said it was online, <clears throat> which I think is crap. I think it should be higher because it's online. And uh, they started, I had hours out the wazoo. If I didn't sign up with them, I would have, I don't know how I would have been able to survive in the beginning of COVID. And now remember, I was in Korea at the time. So I did well the first year. 
Then I asked for a raise. I got a small raise. But they were like, uh, yeah, we're changing the policy. You have to work 40% offline. And I said, well, that's not possible because I don't live in Seoul. I told them I lived outside Seoul. And they said, well, you know, that's the policy. And I would begrudgingly, grudgingly, grudgingly, accepted it because I had no other options at that time. Now then, I was also teaching face-to-face -face at some private kindergartens, and I was making good money. But the hours were killing me, and the travel was killing me. So I finally decided, when COVID really hit, to go full, full-time online, and that's what I did. And I paired up with Carrot, and then I found a couple other companies that gave me a couple hours here and there, but I didn't really pursue them because Carrot was fulfilling my needs. In 2022, 2023 came along and all of a sudden, I have no more contracts. I had four contracts, four hours a week, which is nothing compared to what I used to have. So those four hours a week, we're not gonna cut it. So I started working with some other companies. I found some kid companies that teach kids online. By now, everybody was jumping on the Zoom bandwagon in 2000, in 2023. Everybody was teaching online and everyone was accepting it as this is the new norm. Even when people were going back to school companies and employees were like yeah we like it because of its flexibility and i can do it from anywhere at any time i don't need to go into the office and it was perfect for me because i could do back-to-back -back classes right instead of traveling for 20 30 minutes and losing that time i can work so like let's say for example and this is what i'm trying to explain to my one friend who is a um, online who is a teacher as well and she wants to go online she wants to understand my mentality she's like but you're making less per hour i said you don't have to think about less per hour you have to think about it in how many hours can i physically work so you can physically work you know 10 12 hours a day but how many of those hours are you traveling right if you are available from 6 a.m till 9 p.m That's, uh, you know, 15, 16 hours, sorry, 12, 15 hours. Let's say 15 hours, one hour for lunch, let's say 14 hours, okay? Out of those 14, hey guys, the camera did that thing again where it shut down because it was overheating. So when you use active HDR, it really heats up the phone. I gotta figure out how to minimize that. Because when I go to Thailand, I'd like to use HDR because the colors are amazing. Anyway. What was I saying? And and I I can't in I can't in uh, if I'm not using HDR, I can't use the picture in picture. So this will not be in picture in picture. So let's just talk about, look at my ugly face and then this beautiful sky behind me. Um, so we were talking about how many hours you can physically work in a day. So from 6 a.m. till 9 p.m. or 10 p.m., even midnight, you can only physically work half of that because the other half you're traveling to and from the class. So no matter how many um, hours you work, you're only ever working half the hours you physically could work. So you can make more money and work longer hours and spend more money going from place to place, or you can work less hours, make less money and spend less money. So it all works out the same in the end. This is what I'm trying to explain to her. But in her mind, 
because she's younger. She still has this per hour thing in her mind. She doesn't take into account transportation costs, costs for clothing, costs for food, costs for transit, costs for all of those other things, and the potential lost income. So, look at it this way, and here's the math. Let's say you have 12 hours in the day that you physically can work. You can only really work six to maybe seven of those hours. Let's say six, okay? But you're traveling the other five hours plus lunch, okay? Because you're transiting to and from the class. If you can fill your day, okay? If you can fill your day every day, six days a week, that's good. That's not reality. That's not the reality, okay? <clears throat> So if you work six hours in the day, and let's just keep the numbers nice and even, $100 an hour, that's $600 a day. Plus you're spending money on transiting and food, okay? So you're spending about 100 to $150 a month just on transit, just on transit, okay? Depending on how far you travel. Then you have your clothing and your food because you're gonna buy food out on the road. You're gonna to go to a restaurant for lunch, you're gonna buy a coffee, you're gonna do this, that, the other thing. So at least 10 to $20 a day on food. Now, that's, let's say after expenses, it's $500 a day, okay? Now, if you cut your pay and go online, you can work 10 hours a day with no transit. And you can fill your hours because your hours are one hour long, 55 minutes. I only work 55 minutes. I always say the classes are 55 minutes long because I need five minutes to write the report. And I don't do that on my time. I do that on the company clock. So five minutes to write the re report then get ready for my next class. So if I work 10 hours a day, okay, I'm only awake for 10 hours. I don't have to transit. I'm making 500 bucks if I'm getting only paid 50 bucks an hour for online class, because online classes are cheaper. Now I'm just giving round numbers so the math is easier, but I'm still making the same amount of money Profit per day, less expenses, less stress, and less hours. Now, if I work a couple extra hours, I'm making more money. Working online, I am making more money per day, not per hour. I'm making more money per day than I was when I worked face-to-face -face because transit was killing me. You know, sometimes my transit was 40 minutes between locations. And then you have to find a contract that is willing to work around your travel schedule. What if they're not? You lose the contract. Well, here, there is no schedule problem because it's one hour blocks. It's like going to the doctor. I had a client book a class for 10 a.m. said sorry I had another you're, you're double booking me I can't do it oh okay sorry I didn't look at your schedule how's 9 30 perfect I still got the contract because it's so easy to move my schedule around when I'm working online <clears throat> so this is what I need to do to convince my friend okay to do that hello um, so Back to Carrot Global. Sorry, I went on a tangent there. But I wanted you to guys to understand the finances behind why online is better. Because it's easier, less stress. I'm at home the whole day. I don't have to go outside. I don't have to change my clothes. I don't have to get dressed. I can eat and drink whenever I want. Right? Everything is there. I'm at home, comfortable. 
If I have a half hour between class or one hour, I can take a break, I can take a nap. Can't do that when you're on the road. Whew, it's hot. Plus I'm exercising. All right, next. Carrot Global then, what happened in 2023 is they cut my classes because I asked for a raise and they refused. And I said, well, I'm not happy with that. But, because I had four contracts with them and they were paying me decent wage, um, and they were still the only really company that had a lot of classes. There were other companies I was working with in 2023. I joined two other companies. And what I discovered in 2023 was that these other companies, I was curious because their starting rate was much higher. Their starting rate was much higher than Carrot. And I'm wondering, how are they able to do this? And doing some digging, doing some digging, I contacted some former managers at Carrot. And, well, no, what happened was I switched over to a company called YBM and BCM and CC4. CC4 is doing really well. And I, one of these managers had switched over and I had discovered, I had discovered that uh, the manager goes, oh, Sam, you remember me? I'm blah, blah, blah from Karen. I'm like, oh, hi, yeah, you're, you're at CC4 now. He says, yeah, I switched over. So I reached out to him recently. I said, what's going on at Carrot? Why is every manager leaving? He says, oh yeah, they're really a crap com company. I did this in 2024. They are uh, really going downhill because of their, the way they're running their company. The management wants profits at any cost. So the Nobody, no teachers want to work for the rate of pay. So the quality of teachers is going down and the stress of maintaining the contracts with the companies is getting to the managers. They can't manage it because the way in Korean culture it works is that my student isn't gonna complain to me. My student is gonna complain to my manager. It's gonna yell at them and ask for discounts and credits and. That goes against their commission because they work on commission. So if they have to give credits and stuff, they lose and they lose money. They lose a huge amount of money because I'm, uh, their, their salary is low and their commission is high. So it's not an easy job for them. But at these other companies, they pay a higher rate which means they get better teachers and the teachers stay for longer. <clears throat> and then I reached out to one of my students and I said, um, you renewed your contract, what did Carrot say? Well, Carrot actually offered me a new teacher and I thought about it, but then I looked at their resumes and everyone except one was not a native teacher. They were Filipino or Chinese or Indian. They didn't have native accents and they didn't have your education. I said, ah. So I discovered two things about Carrot Global. Their management turnover rate is huge. Their employee turnover rate is huge. I must have gone with one contract, I must have gone in one year, three or four different managers. At the end, I was like, who's my manager? I don't know, you've changed it so many times. And the quality of teachers has dropped. So working with CC4, YBM, BCM, I actually signed a huge contract with CC4. Oh no, with YBM. CC4 I signed a contract with and they gave me a huge contract and I just renewed that contract this week but YBM I'm about to sign a new contract 
for a bunch of hours with them. And they are gonna give me a huge daytime contract, which are golden, like eight hours a week or 10 hours a week. As many as can fit in my schedule. What Exactly what I did back in October, November. You guys remember, I was working 16 hours a day, sometimes eight hours straight, which was amazing because the money is good. Oh, that contract was amazing. So, especially if you can get a contract in the daytime, the reason behind that is because employees usually want morning, lunchtime, or evening. And if you get a three hour contract, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you can't fill anything else. If the customer cancels in advance, you don't get paid and you can't resell those hours, which sucks. But if you get a daytime contract, 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., those are beautiful because those are unsellable hours. Think of travel and low season. Those are my low season hours. The best hours for classes for me are 7, 8 a.m., maybe 9 a.m. Lunchtime. And lunchtime and then uh, after 5 p.m. Right through till 10 p.m. I have classes sometimes 11 p.m. With clients. So... CC4, YBM, BCM, they all generated new contracts for me in 2023. And then in 2024, I said to them, hey, I have a client who is interested in leaving their company and coming to your company. How do I do that? Well, get their HR team to contact them. Now, normally HR doesn't get involved, the student doesn't get involved in HR, but here's the beautiful thing about teaching vice presidents and directors and CEOs. When they tell HR to do something, HR does it, because I've done it before. When I was working for Samsung, uh, the CEO told, sent an email to HR and said, please change the contract from company A to company B. That's what I did. I stole the contract, which is illegal. And the former owner of the contract yelling and screaming at me, I said, sue me. <clears throat> so that's what I did. Now I talked with the customer at a conference call with him and HR because I wanted him to know from me, not from Carrot, why I left. And he said, yeah, Carrot said that you had gone to your home country. I said, see, they lied. They lied to you. I'm not, I'm still here. Because he's asking me, you know, where are you? Are you back in your home country? I said, no. Why, did Carrot say I left Korea? He said, yes, no. I'm still in Korea. I'm a permanent resident. Now, he doesn't know that I'm outside Korea, but you know, for, for the argument's sake, I knew what Carrot was gonna do. They were gonna blame the teacher, which is what they do. They lie. Carrot Global is in it for the money. They will lie, lie, lie. They will lie to you, they will cheat you, and whatever they can to get their money. They will threaten you. But here's the beautiful thing about being a freelancer and a permanent resident, I'm not scared. I have no fear. They can threaten me, I have other jobs. I quit there, so I had four contracts renewed. So those four contracts I lost, obviously, but I've already recovered all of those contracts with just two new contracts because the pay I negotiated much higher. Because these companies see my value, they know my resume. And here's the other beautiful thing, especially with the big companies, the big corporations in Korea, Samsung, LG, etc. Those companies have my record on file. 
So when these companies go and I say, what, who's the client? They say LG. I say, please ask LG HR to look at my record, okay? Because I taught this person, that person, and this person at LG. And I always get hired because I have references within the company. So if they know that I taught this executive, the HR doesn't want any stress or drama with their senior executives. So if they know, oh, this teacher has already taught executive ABC, we, we have no problem in sending to this executive. <clears throat> so it all, I always, if I get an application for a job with any of the big companies, I'm guaranteed, guaranteed to get the job because of my previous uh, work with that same company. So it's always a benefit. So for those of you who are interested in working for Carrot Global, I'd say forget it. Don't even bother. Apply with them, but don't spend too much time investing your time with them because it's just drama. They're gonna yell at you, they're gonna scream at you, they're gonna threaten you. The HR team, first of all, I sent an email. I asked my manager, I go, who do I talk to about a raise this year? My contracts have renewed for the second year. He said, oh, you have to contact the HR team. Great, contact the HR team. Six business days later, still no reply. After I followed up with another email on the fourth day, so I contact my manager, I say, hey manager, HR team still has not replied. Oh, I'm so sorry, let me get them to follow up with you. HR team finally replies that day. Oh, we're sorry for the delay. I say, well, don't apologize. You're always delayed. I never get a response from you, just don't do it. Don't apologize. Oh, well, we're really sorry, what can we do for you? Well, this is what I'm interested in. Can we set up a Zoom call to discuss this. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as you know, the policy is this, that, and the other thing. We won't be able to discuss that. And I'm like, well, can we have a conversation about this? Because I'd like to discuss it with you. No reply. Two, three, four days later, I, I email again. Uh, no reply? Can you update me on this? Um, I didn't reply because the answer would still be the same. And if you ask again, we'll fire you. What the what? Is that how you talk? So I said, fine. Now this was before January 1. I said, fine, no problem. I quiet quit. I never showed up for class. I deleted all of their phone numbers, blocked all of their phone numbers, blocked all of their cacao, which is the SMS tool and uh, yeah I did get some phone calls later on in the week like this week I did get phone calls from unknown numbers because I've deleted their numbers which then it rings once and then goes to a block right so <clears throat> I got a couple of those I did get one text message please access your attendance tool and update blah 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 I deleted it I don't even know how to get into it uh, so I talked with the customer the customers in negotiation with the new uh, recruiter so hopefully by Monday I should have an answer and start teaching them on Tuesday uh, two of the contracts will transfer, two will not. So, I stole two clients from Carrot, which is illegal, under their contract, but that's, their contract is not policy, is not law, it's their policy. So they can try to sue me, they'll never be able to, because they have to find me and serve me. And my addresses that they have, 
don't exist. So good luck with that. And immigration is never going to give them my real address. The address I use at immigration, they'll never give it to them. Because that's confidential. So, uh, yeah, if you want to deal with uh, carrot, I will suggest 110% to not. And if you have questions, please feel free to contact me. I will give you advice on carrot. I will give you advice on who to deal with and how to deal with them. Uh, if you have a legal visa, please. Only contact me if you have a legal working visa. If you are not legally entitled to work in Korea, and, I'm, and you know what the legal visas are, okay? You have to have an F-class visa to work at a recruiter, okay? Don't bother calling me if you have any other kind of visa. Please, you know the law. If you don't know the law, look it up. I'm not here to explain the law to you, okay? It doesn't matter. I, get, I grow tired of saying this over and over and over again. It doesn't matter your qualifications. It matters your visa. If you don't have a legal visa, you cannot work. They won't hire you. End of story. Stop asking. I'm sorry I'm being blunt with that, but it's just like, come on, people. If you don't know the legal laws, then, you know, what are you doing traveling? All right, it just, it's common sense. You know you need a legal visa to work, okay? You can't be a tourist, you can't be a student, you can't be uh, on another type of visa, okay? Please, find out. Anyway, I wanna thank everybody for joining me. Please, learn to live life. Don't let life live you. I am Sri Lankan semi-retired with mom and dad. I will see you guys on the other side. <laughs>